Hey guys, welcome back to Off the Record where we talk about whatever we want. Did you know you could buy a mansion in Vegas for 800 grand? Watch, check this out. So Steve and Joe already know about this because I sent this picture to them yesterday. Yeah, it looked like some crazy what? celebrity uh, shit. It's nuts, For man. 800? 800. And there's, oh. this is like a baller baller mansion. Well, right? We should give out, them David. some perspective. But you know what though? 800 still like to the rest of the the, the United States is still a lot. But for LA? That's a shit ton of money. What kind of fucking place is this, dude? <laughs> for LA. For you don't LA, get a house right. like that. You get a one bedroom, yeah. one bathroom. You're right. Yeah. It's half a resort, dude. So there's an apartment, or I guess they call it condos in LA, right? That's being sold that's right next to Mariel's place where she lives right now. It's a one bed, one bath. It's five hundred thousand dollars. Dude, our house is like seven thirty. That's what I'm. That's fucking tragic. Dude, I used to live like by the Brady Bunch house, mm. and uh, a home <laughs> opened up right by there. One point one million, one bedroom, one bathroom. What? But that's because the of the Brady Bunch house. No right? bullshit. No? Who wants to live? It's like, oh, I can live next to the Brady Bunch house. I do. It's yeah. not a but. The Brady fans are dead, man. I want to live in the Full House house. Exactly. Well, yeah, that's different. That's yeah. a different. And every time I drive home, I'm like, like, everywhere you. <laughs> San Francisco neighborhoods probably crazy expensive. Oh yeah, dude. is it like where the painted ladies are? Painted that, ladies. Painted ladies. Painted ladies. That's what they call it. The oh, houses. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, I'm not crazy. The, oh. the houses that they show. It sounded like a strip club to me. It's like by the painted ladies. No, it's the, that's what they call the houses. Okay. There you go. You okay. should open up a strip club. What's a painted ladies? The houses. the row of houses oh, that they show. Colors. You know, at the oh, end they when they're all having a picnic. Yeah. Oh. oh. Thank you, Gio. I'm glad you. Someone new here. <laughs> you know they're tr they're like triplexes. Did you know that? Those are actually really big. My uncle lived in one of them. What? Yeah. There's like a whole bottom floor with the kitchen and everything. This whole middle and then the. Oh really? Top. Yeah. I thought it was one whole house, like it in charm. It can be, but a lot. A of, charmed house. A lot of people they house. they they divide it up and then they they sell off the sections. You yeah. like the gothic style? Yeah. Like the really? Victorian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Victorian, Victorian. Yeah. There's a shit ton of those in Highland Park, dude. And there's a I bunch like of Mexicans. It. You'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, true. It's hella creepy, but I don't I know. I like it. It has character. It's because it's creepy. creepy. That's it's like creepy for me. so. It's not because it, it's beautiful. I think it's, they're all beautiful houses. But the fact that I've seen too many scary movies with that yeah. shit happen, I'm like. <laughs> well, also they're just old as fuck, and you gotta yeah. fix that shit, man. Yeah. There's a bunch of that's them in uh, Midtown of. Sacramento. <laughs> I didn't realize like how much of a pain in the ass it is to buy a Victorian like old home that hasn't been redone at all. Like, it's just, there's so many fucking issues with it. Like, even like the, these contractors that you ask to fix it, they just go, fucking shit. You know, because it's yeah. so, there's so much to do. With I it. like it's that, like, con fucking shit. Yeah. What was telling me yesterday, he was, what was that thing you're you telling me? You put, you put your hand on a wall in one of these houses, and what does it do? So it's like, it's like this office, right? You go like this, and watch, you'll hear the rest of the building. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. When you go in one of these houses, you go to any Victorian house, you go, you push on it, and you just hear, yeah, you hear that through the whole wall, and you're like, okay, yeah, maybe not. Like, okay, what kind of earthquakes is this gonna withstand? I don't know. Yeah. A lot of Sacramento, like, Midtown homes are all Victorian. They are. But they fixed them up, though. Uh, <laughs> you know, they actually did some modern? due diligence to it. That's why I like, I like that new, new, new. Yeah. Oh, but then I hate those houses. Like, now, like, the the, the, the tech people took over a lot of the San Francisco homes, and then they take they get rid of the molding and the actual character of the homes, and now they oh. paint them gray, and it's so sad. I'm they like, paint them gray. They put that fucking... Uh, uh, they have a square cement. Oh yeah, for the in the driveway, yeah. and they put those little pebbles between it. Yeah. You know what That's I fucking reason. hate? Those driveways that are square cement, and then there's just like a row of grass in between. Yeah, why do they do that? I mean, like it's like it looks like a six pack on the floor with grass around it, oh, and I'm like, like the house in the for Taika's birthday. Is that what you're talking about? How they had the yeah, like that. I yeah. tripped on that so many times. Why, why do you you can't play basketball on it? They're gonna get I mean, oil it stains it looks on cool, it. Cool though. It, yeah, That's the problem. It's cute. That's can't all. Can't do shit it's on it. That's good, but it doesn't. And you don't have to take care of the lawn. That's probably why. Oh, you still oh. have like your pop of green. And you don't just have this big slab of just yeah. cement. I like that. So I see that. I go, oh, basketball. I feel like that's like a new thing because just they probably put all the grass in the back. Because yeah. that's just more maintenance for you. you know I like I mean? grass, though. Because I see people start doing the fucking desert landscapes in the front yeah. of the house. I know every house you look at, you're like, what's the acres, though? And I'm like, what's the house look like? <laughs> yeah. I like the grass. <laughs> so you get a house, though. The weird thing is, like, when you go into those old homes, you can't you grow can, sugar you can cane see on cement. what was important 
uh, depending on the time, right? So, th like, if you go into these old Victorian homes, the living spaces are fucking huge. I love that. There's a dining space, there's a lounge space, there's a big There's a kitchen. fireplace yeah. everywhere. But the rooms... You're talking open small. floor plan, David? Open floor plan? <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what we're doing. And then the fucking space. rooms are like this small because you're not just supposed to stay in your room all the time. You're supposed to come out into the living room. And they didn't even invent a king-size bed yet. Oh, probably living yeah. spaces. That's probably I think that's why. So they only have, like, a queen-size bed and then you try to put a modern bed the in there. The average height was, yeah. like, five, six. Yeah, it just yeah, takes up it everything. Depends on the era on how their social life was or like how the yeah. family life was. Like I think it was mid 70s and on where the room started to get bigger. Dude, that's because George Washington was this tall. I <laughs> know. <laughs> he had no nutrients. Yeah, dude, and the no. beds are so tiny. Like yeah, hella that's true. tiny. The rooms weren't small. We're just getting bigger. Well, that's for sure. All the yeah. hormones in the food that they put in. That's true. <laughs> like George Washington, you should have to jump to reach the door handle. <laughs> that's fucking cute. That's what I heard, dude. Yeah. Was George Washington the one that was bled to death? What is it? Bled? He was like bled to death through his ankles or some shit. Cause uh, I think they were trying to cure him from his disease. <laughs> you know, back in the day, they would. <laughs> Bleed them. Oh, yeah. The way to do it was to slice somebody up and bleed them out. Yeah. That you know what's crazy weird. about that is it must have worked at some point for them. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> They're like, God damn, this shit works. It's crazy. Let's keep doing that? this one. I would lie about my cold all the time. Oh yeah. Like, you have a cold? Absolutely not. No. I feel. Bad. Like, did, oh, is that a sniffle, David? Are you okay? No, I'm good. No, I'm doing. <laughs> are, you, are you sure? I'll bleed you to death. Like it's just right in the fucking kneecap. Yeah. No thanks. Yeah. Jesus. Crazy. Yeah. Well, I was. Um, I'm planning to move to Glendale. What this Friday? So. Fucking Glendale, it's so stupid the way they set it up because all these luxury apartments, it's dumb. So we have, it's a two bed, two bath, right? But the walk-in closets are as big as the fucking room, which is fucking stupid. Hey, that's a waste of space. But it's good for your shoe collection. Man, fuck my shoe collection. I want a bigger room, dude. Oh yeah. So all I can put is a bed, two nightstands, and then put a, a TV on the wall. That's all there is room for. Dude, when, when me and Nikki were looking at places, uh, we we found this place that was really great. It was perfect, but there wasn't an office for me. Oh. And so, but there was a walk-in closet, like in the in, in the <laughs> dining room. So Nikki's all like, the dining room. You could get a computer in here and <laughs> put your chair. And I'm like, Why don't you fucking do it? And then she knows me, <clears throat> so she's she needs like, an office. Yeah, yeah, no, she needs an office too. So we both want an office. That was part of our requirements. But this place was perfect. It had everything she wanted, the kind of kitchen she wanted, the layout she wanted, and then. Oh, what you wanted. Well, yeah, fuck that, exactly. <laughs> uh, and I sort of am like, yeah, well, I'd rather take the hit than you, of course. So then she's like, well, fine, I'll take it. It'll be my office. I'll be in the closet. And then, of course, I'm like, I'll do the fucking closet thing. But then, I, but then, I, but then we're driving home, and I'm like, fine, I'll do the closet thing. And I'm like, wait, we're still shopping for houses. I'm not gonna fucking just agree to the closet thing and be excited about this. This is signed the lease yet? Yeah, exactly. But she was totally down for me to just like, like wake up in the morning. Closet. Good morning, honey. And then I walk into the closet and close the door. <laughs> I like it when she says she's gonna take the bullet. She has to make sure that you know that you should be fucking grateful for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I guess I'll take the closet. Yeah. And then she goes in and she starts crying. <laughs> exactly. She oh, shuts the closet. <laughs> no, she shuts the closet and then she's like. <laughs> I know. I know. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's manipulating the fuck out of me. I know. <laughs> Dude, I had my room in the closet once when I was like 11 years old. Oh my god. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> That's like. No. That's like Harry Potter. Not a sad thing. I was happy. I wanted it. The segment. Were you watching Harry Potter with Casey and he's under the stairs and you're like, I kind of had that kind of thing. I know. You know, I actually did. You really? So. Oh my time, God. Listen, during that time in my life, and this was before Harry Potter, uh, I really loved tiny and closed spaces. Like, I just wanted to be hugged by the room I was in. So. That's I, called being suffocated. I liked it. It's I called know. being held hostage. I know. Was it so like, you, was it like playing it. fort? Yeah, it was like having a fort. Okay. Like, I really loved like just being hugged, and so she needed I, to feel safe, guys. Jesus, this is psychologically <laughs> revealing. Okay. So when you watch Taken and that girl was screaming and crying under the bed, you're like, lucky. No, that's, that's stupid. Right. So she watches that that uh, that movie where the where the cats he trapped in a coffin, and she's like, oh, that's really nice. I know. <laughs> she's being hugged. I actually wanted my room to be smaller because I had a walk-in closet where my twin-size bed fit perfectly, and so I fixed it all up, so it it felt like a fort. But then I wanted it even smaller. So then, I, oh, if, shit. I could, if I could sleep in the in that little space under the stairs, so I slept there for a week, but it was too tiny. You I fit a twin go. size bed in the closet? In my walk-in closet, in my bedroom. Yeah. That's pretty big. Yeah. I just picture you going to like but funerals and trying to jump into the casket because it feels nice. <laughs> <laughs> totally. My turn. Oh yeah. Oh, that would oh. fucking freak me out. The casket? You were like, no, my mom know. didn't let me yeah. close the, the closet oh, yeah. door to go to sleep because she's like, you're gonna suffocate in here. I'm like, but you don't hug me, so the room has to hug oh, me. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. My mom That's hugged me. 
I got hugs from my mom. But was it enough? <laughs> was it enough? Probably not. Yeah. I needed the room to hug me. Yeah. Hang yeah, out with Bobby Lee yesterday. So he does a lot of weird things, and the man has arguably slapped me in the face, and I've never been mad at him. Like, I just can't get mad at them. He just straight up slaps you? Like, he, just, he just goes pop like that. Hard? Like, not hard. It's just Korean like slap a Korean, like, play oh, around okay. slap. Oh, okay. And you know, Korean like, slap. I think if it was any other person. Yeah, it's like this yeah. type of thing. Like, kimchi slap. Yeah. Oh, like your adorable slap. Yeah. I didn't even think yeah. he could reach you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, any other person that would do that, I would think, like, don't fucking touch my face. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But it's Bobby Lee, yeah. right? And I fucking love that guy. Yeah. So he could literally do whatever he wants to me. Yeah. But he did something actually yesterday that pissed me off. <gasps> oh. He grabbed your dick. No, this is what he did. Talk about I that. love That's Korean right. beef, dude. Like, this fool did. And it was nothing that he did to me. It was just, who he is as a person. Oh, I know what you're gonna talk about. So this motherfucker, we go to a coffee shop, right? <clears throat> he sits down, he has this croissant, he eats it, he has this other cookie, and then there's no coffee. And I'm like, I thought you were gonna get a coffee. And he goes, I ordered the coffee, but I think they, they forgot to give it to me. I was like, he goes, what do I do? What do I do? What do you mean, what do you do? You get up and you go get your coffee. He goes, I, I, I don't like competition. I was like, it's not coffee. That's a good body. It's, <laughs> it's your coffee. It's rightfully yours. You bought it. Go get it. He goes, I, 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 I can't do it. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. And I'm getting a, like, a little frustrated because I, I think he's joking. And I'm like, no, no, he said that here before. Yeah, he said yeah. it. Yeah. Both Kalila and they both, They're both he cowards. Was, and so, okay, I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna get you a coffee. He goes, no, I don't want you to do that because it's too confrontational. I was like, but I'm gonna do it. So he goes up, he goes, no, I'm just gonna buy a new coffee. So he goes up, he buys a second coffee, oh. right? Whoa. So they run out of coffee, so they only, oh, give, him, my. They only give him half a cup. Oh, right? No. And then he goes, I'll just pay for the full thing. So he pays for the full, he pays for a half a cup of coffee for two. And he just yeah. takes it and he just goes, I, all right, I'm gonna go. He just fucking walks. I got so fucking frustrated with him. I'm like, go get your fucking money back, dude. They were gonna give it to him for free. And he goes, no, I'm gonna pay for it full. Oh my gosh. He's a salesman's dream come true, I dude. know. Fuck. He's like an anti-diva, because you know most celebrities, like, once they get to a certain level of fame, they demand like, yeah. free shit. But for him, he's like, oh, no, 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 no. He never even uses it. Dude, exactly. When Oprah's getting free shit, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what do you need free shit? Like, what do you need it for? And I think for her, it's probably about respect. It's like, oh, really? I'm fucking Oprah, Oprah, bro. She's like a Sims character that put in the cheat code. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. You just pick things out and you just put it in your house. Exactly. That's how she lives. And this she must be so bored with that because I got bored when I used the cheat code. I've never been more bored with that game. I just started killing. When you have everything, you just put the stove in a small little room and then you let them burn. That's Dude, I remember when I got I got to buy my first like like flat screen TV and I was like, that's nice. <laughs> But then when you put in the cheat code, you could buy everything. Yeah. I was like so bored after that. Yeah. He had to valley his car. And so when he went to go get his car, he didn't have change. He's so non-confrontational. He doesn't even want to ask change back from the valet. So he tipped the valet dude like $18. Because he just gave him a 20 It's not a confrontation. <laughs> it's not a confrontation. Yeah. So I'm sitting there just. Can I get change back? That's just an exchange. Right. He gives him the 20 And then he doesn't want to ask for the change back. So he just gives him the full 20. Damn, he makes me feel good about myself. Because I'm not that bad. You should punk him next no, time. Tiff, Tiff's what, a, Bobby? Tiff's a jackboot wearing bitch compared to Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Punk is that. Like, damn. He has no shame in shitting on a fucking wall in public. Yeah, <laughs> what? And grabbing strangers' dick. Right. And showing strangers his yeah. dick. Yes. That's kind of confrontational. Yes. Yeah. But he can't ask for what. I think it's about the levies of power, right? So when he's in a writer's room or something and he knows that he's the guy in the room because they're writing for him, he can grab on dicks and things and, and everyone's like, ah, you're, you know, he's, he's, the hierarchy is there. You know what I mean? It's to crack me up because at the end of it, I was just so fucking dumbfounded. I just looked at him and I went, he goes, what, what do you, what, you want a fucking hug? And I was like, I'm not gonna hug you. And he just storms off. <laughs> When did he slap you in all of this? Just like, I don't want a coffee. David, I told you I don't want a coffee. No, like, he, he literally sits down, and he goes, what's up, dude? <laughs> Slaps me in the face, and I'm like, what? What? When, I used to do, when I used to do improv in San Diego, my mentor, Trenton, he used to, we used to like do a game with each other on stage, and he started it every time, where like we'd be in some dramatic improv scene or something that's like, you know, pretend dramatic, and he would haul off and fucking smack me as hard as he could. And then I would like In the jump face or on your In mind? the face, across the face. Like in the scene. In the scene. And then it got to the point where it was escalated, oh, where I would jump in the air and smack him. Oh. <laughs> like I'm using the fucking momentum and fucking smack him back. You know what I mean? Like it was like, 
like that. You just walk off stage and they just hear some fucking shit moving in a closet. It's a spear. <laughs> <laughs> but he wouldn't do that to anyone either. So it's like this weird thing where it's like it's like we're buds in a way because he let he smacks the fuck out of me and I smack the fuck out of him. It's just weird. I felt really comfortable with you. Brotherly yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah, you like it. Brotherly thing, but it's like I don't like it, but I'm just gonna slap you back yeah. harder. I never liked it. <laughs> and it always made me want to smack him harder. Exactly. Yeah, that's weird. But you have big fucking hands. Did he, did he know what he was getting into? No, he's big, he's just as big as me, man. <laughs> oh really? Oh, big wow. fucking Maybe that's why he's like, okay, we're both big, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> like, son of a bitch. <laughs> it was like prank. We used to do all kinds of shit like that. We used to sp like do spit takes on each other. Oh, uh, what does that mean? We're like, you, you do the water thing, and then somebody oh. says the thing, and then you spit it that's out. That's funny. <laughs> that's like the purposely game. Purposely laugh on him? No, I purposely make sure to spit on him, and he pur purposely makes sure to spit on me. <laughs> what a fun <laughs> improv Every show. time. Are there any of these vi videos online that we can watch? I want to watch your I don't think so. You, you don't want to watch improv. You don't want to watch improv. I just said I want to watch No, it. you don't want to watch t t like improv on a screen or you don't want to be oh, there. That's, that's true. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Completely yeah. different media. It doesn't catch the, uh, catch the magic. I think like the only show that made improv fun was the Who Lines. Yeah. Is it anyway? Yeah. Because improv games are much more fun. Because yeah. like improv shows, they're yeah. like a hit and miss. It's like 50% you might get a really good one or the other half it just might be really bad people. Yes. Yeah. So just try recording that and see what happens with it from a camera from like 10 feet away. It's just like this wide stage. It's just, it doesn't capture it. And it's funny because that's how I like first got into improv. I was doing that kind of shit in San Diego. And then I came to LA and I started doing long form improv. And then all long form improv people view short form improv people as being hacked. Oh my God. Oh, funny. There's this little like. Like a little battle. Well, it's like, it's like, oh, well, at long form, we do more like advanced, like longer scenes. There's no like, props. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not a lot of props. You do all the space work yourself. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, we don't need all that hack shit that you guys do. I want to take both those groups and sit them down together and say, hey, both of you are losers. <laughs> right? <laughs> Nobody fucking cares. Name the most famous improviser, right? Del Close. A lot of people in LA have no idea who the fuck Del Close is, you know what I mean? Oh, Del really? Close? He's yeah. the best? Del, Del Close? Del Close. Yeah. I don't even know who that He's is. He's the guy who like founded the whole... I thought the, oh, really? the, the career path for them was Mad TV or SNL or... Yeah. It is, yeah. So it's, yeah. A, it's like entry level, it's like you're the receptionist in the office. Mm. Like before do you get to... Do improv people ever do stand up? Oh yeah, sometimes, yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a different thing though. It's completely it's hella different. different. It's hella different. But a lot of there's a lot of crossover. Yeah. Yeah. I only know about the improv guys that make it, like Will Ferrell or like yeah, Charles same here. Or like Steve Carell, like those guys. I would say almost all the dudes in comedy at some point did improv or stand up for a while, right? Yeah. Steve Carell's improv's like wild, dude. Like his yeah. shit's so fucking good. Did you see? I I think it was is his audition for The Office, and he pretended to eat a fucking muffin. <laughs> Like a muffin that was choking him. Yeah, and it was so fucking good. I I forgot that he wasn't actually eating a muffin. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. I want to watch that. He's so fucking good, and it was just so funny. Yeah, I mean that was that was his audition. Will Ferrell's SNL audition where he's doing the uh, get off the shed bit. Have you seen that? <laughs> no. He's just yelling at this kid. He's like, get off the fucking shed. He's like, get off the shed. <laughs> he keeps on trying to have a nice barbecue with everyone. He's like, he's like, hey, what do you guys want? You want some chicken tenders? Okay, great. He's like, yeah. He's like, do you like barbecue on that? He like light sauce or medium? So like, get off the fucking shed, Kevin, Dylan. Get off the fucking shed! Like, it's great. It's a great bit, man. SNL doesn't make me laugh anymore, man. Like, I feel like the, the old cast members, um, they just they just brought something that the new cast members aren't bringing. I don't know. There's a couple things going on. I think that the, the it's like when I was a kid and I watched Conan O'Brien and my dad thought Conan O'Brien sucked. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that the current SNL stuff is for the kids. Like, that, that's for the younger people. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, consume that. That makes so. sense. Yeah, like, like we aged out. SNL of it. never made me laugh. Me neither. Yeah. I've always yeah. liked Mad TV, yeah. Yeah. In Living Color. Yeah. yeah, it was. I mean, more... I always liked Mad TV more, but SNL always had like. It's kind of like when I watched South Park. South Park to me, I, I didn't like all the episodes, but there were episodes that stuck out to me hard. Oh. I haven't had an SNL episode that made that me stuck remember out. it. The ages of nine to like nineteen, I never missed SNL. Like never oh, once. Oh, that's how it was with Mad TV. TV. Mm. But. I think I just kind of aged out of the. I mean, I, I agree. It doesn't make me laugh anymore, but but it's tough to say that it's because they're not. Funny. Ideas from just kidding films. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Sons of bitches. Yup. We have. Remember the fucking yeah. Ultra Venus? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We with Ben still. We did that shit yeah. first, and then months later. Yeah. Maybe even a year later, the Ultra V net came. They out. fucking came out with theirs, and it was almost the exact same. And then concept. it was the spa, the Korean spa. The one. Korean spa was that SNL? That was Conan. Conan oh. O'Brien. Was it just a sketch at a Korean spa? 
No. No, no, no it was even formatted. It was like the format was like kind of yeah. hyper same. Yeah. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we it, challenged each other at the spa. We were just like, and then they did the same exact yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, the writers are so uncreative. I at least credit us. I did a whole thing called Puppet Cop about a guy with a puppet partner, cop with a puppet partner, and it's played in a world where they're Puppets are like people. Like and this kind of jobs. puppet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a puppet. What are the, like the puppets? It was like a fucking. Oh, like like. It was uh, like one of these puppets. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, kind of. There was this. Uh, there was this uh, Foot Locker commercial. So I had this character that I had a long time ago called Ball Handles, and it was just this ridiculous basketball character. Yeah, that was. Right. And so basically, he's called Ball Handles because he just really checks everybody in the balls. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. As a basketball player, and then it, it did really well. It got like like whatever like I don't know, 10 million views on Facebook and some shit like that. And then later on, Foot Locker did a commercial exactly like ball oh, handles. That's why oh. I found out because everybody either tweeted me, tagged me in the video. They're like, hey, congrats on writing this commercial. And I was like, what do you mean? I was like, did they use the ball handles? And I saw it, it was almost, they just tweaked the little small things about it. It was like frame for frame. Yeah, and I was like, what in the fuck is this shit, dude? It made me fucking mad. Some fucking writer out there is like, this is a great idea. They, don't, they didn't copyright this shit. Fucking yeah. amateur, like and then they YouTuber. fucking say, "Hey, look at this! Look at what I wrote!" And then yeah. they're pitching these commercials, <laughs> and they think it's a great idea, and they're profiting off of our writing. Yeah. Well, I had a weird time with my puppet cop show because um, it was like the same kind of thing as the Happy Time Murders, which came out later, which bombed, I guess, really badly. But then it's weird because I kind of know the guy who wrote Happy Time Murders. So you think he copied you? I don't. It's weird. It's just a weird thing. I'm not even. I, I, it's just weird to be close to somebody who who does the same kind of thing that you did. Oh yeah. It's a very strange thing. And well, like I've had people. Well, how tweet identical it. was it? Because sometimes it's just a coincidence, right? For it's sure. It's like really the con. Not only the pitch, the concept, but the format, or like the beats were the same, or like. Like how close was it? Was it like Jesse Wellens and Casey Neistat's vlogs back in the day? I don't. It's like I he don't, copied exactly. I never watched the Casey Neistat. I don't know. Oh, okay. I, I um. You're saying Jesse copied Casey or Casey? Or was it like uh, back in the day where like a Dietrich's sketches looked just like Ryan Higa's, like that, like that close? It could be that. I also used to do this art bit, art trolling bit that uh, Nathan for you ended up doing, and then I found out a couple people on the writer staff actually used to be on the maker staff with me. Oh, look at that. So they probably remember like a writer's room with you, well, and then maybe you know because that <clears> happens too because you know we do so much pitches that they hear it and they think it's their own idea. Well, I also think that when you're in a writer's room and you have to come up with an X amount of ideas a week, you just start littering the th page with things that you just have on your head and then you don't know what they're gonna pick and then sometimes they pick that and then it's like, okay. Uh, okay, I forgot it was Steve's. I <laughs> know, or I choose to forget.